So here we have a 92 E30 convertible. This is where you normally would have here and here is where you would normally have these puppies um, for your oil cooler. And they go on like so. The oil cooler bolts on right there. And there's actually two of them. So all late model E30s, and I'm talking about 88 and up, this is their style of oil cooler mounting. All early model cars bolt from here. So you literally just take these, put one there. And you take this one there. And boom, now your oil cooler bolts on from there. Pretty much every single E30 has all these holes. You might have this weird car that may not, either the radio supports aftermarket or something, but you can literally just drill that, put a nut cert, and you're ready to go. Any E30 M3, oil coolers come out of this side and go up. Any swap car, any 24 valve swap that wants to run an oil cooler, your lines have to come in this way anyway, so that oil cooler will work for both. M20 cars, the oil cooler lines come out this way. So I'm gonna show you. This is a, a 91 318. Doesn't even come with an oil cooler from factory. It might be a little hard to see, but there are the late model bolt holes, early model bolt holes, and it has it on both sides. So even cars that don't come with Oil coolers have the provisions. Okay, so this is your standard M20 E30 oil cooler. This happens to be the late model one that has the tabs directly on the cooler on the side here, on the, like right up against it. This is an E30 M3 oil cooler, which also resembles the early 87 and some 88 325s that have this style oil cooler but with these lines so on the m20 cars the oil lines go on the passenger side into the oil filter housing e30 m3 go on the driver's side but if you notice the oil coolers are basically the same thing they're identical it's just the placement the mounting tabs are different so E30 M3, not only do the lines go the other way, but this line goes underneath the cooler. On M20 cars, this line goes above the cooler. So the CSF oil cooler will work pretty much flawlessly on any E30 M3 and swapped car because the line goes to the bottom. But on the late model cars, because the line goes on the top of the cooler, there's gonna be interference between the tube and the cooler. So you do one of two things. You get a custom line made, which just has a less of a tight radius, and it'll go still go above it. It'll have to be a little different, modified. Or you simply run a 90 AN line AL clamp it to the chassis or the oil cooler if there were some bosses here, and you're done. You make your stainless steel oil cooler lines. Same could be said about the E30 M3 one. You can make stainless steel lines, route them however you want, they'll work. 
but the coolers technically bolt on and will work on any chassis because like I said all the chassis have these bolt holes you know for the exception of some early 84 cars and 85 cars but that's the only difference between the E30 M3 cooler the E30 M3 cooler and the M20 oil cooler are the mounting tabs for some models for sorry for some years and the actual tubes the oil cooler lines M20 cars like I said on the right side E30 M3s on the left side 